Good evening and welcome to episode 95 of Schnozcast for Friday, October 16th, 2020. How's everybody doing? Oh, good. Oh, good evening. Fantastic. Uh, cast of characters, this is Bob. And to my left. I'm Nick. And to his left. Oh, hey, I'm Corey. <laughs> Wooly Willy. And last but we, not least. We jumped on that real quick, huh? Yeah, we did. Okay, wow. <laughs> and to his left. Daniel, are we saying our own names now? Yeah, that's oh. sure. Why not? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you grow and evolve as a podcast. Yeah, I, it's, I, it, I was just watching uh, 94 while I was just folding, it was literally folding laundry, laundry in my living room and I was watching it and I'm like, why, why, why does it take me so long to get those introductions? I, that's so. funny that you say that because I was listening to Drew and Mike today and I haven't listened to them for a couple weeks. Yeah. And he's like... Hey, he's like, what's happening? He's like, it's me, Drew, Trudy, Brandon. He just like rifles <laughs> off through him. And I'm like, why aren't, why isn't Bob just doing that? We don't need to say hello and all that See? crap. You know? <laughs> A nice heads up. I was just going to say now. that to him. I, and I was like, what? I forgot. I know. <laughs> I was like, I guess we're doing something new today. <laughs> I decided. It, I decided it probably. <laughs> I decided it while the theme music is playing. I'm like, I should that's probably that, do this just fast this time. That's exactly how that went. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hopefully everyone out there is uh, doing well uh, and had a good week. And now it's the weekend, so time to enjoy it with your favorite podcast that starts with Schnaz. Uh, I was gonna say, fuck Joe Rogan. Oh. Here, here we come. Oh, hold on. It's not Schnoz Rogan. <laughs> well, I know. He threw me off when he said that begins with Schnoz. So. <laughs> oh, sorry. Why did you immediately go to Rogan, though? He's the biggest name in the podcasting world, so. Oh, you had your comeback already, but then I he threw, threw you off with Schnoz. Off, yeah. But you're like, fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. Corey's like, I figured I'd still go with it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Joe Rogan. Backspace. All right. Lob me another one, Bob. Another another softball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for housekeeping, um, if you are new to the podcast, uh, do not forget you are watching us on Facebook Live right now. Uh, but if you're not, if you're in the future, or if you're in the present and you wish to set yourself up for the future, you can stream us on iTunes, Spotify, Mixcloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, or any of the pop pop platforms. Pop 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 pop. pop. Podcast platforms of your choice. Or Lice Lars Radio. You can also follow us on social media on Instagram at Schnozcast, on Facebook at Schnozcast1, that's the number one, or on YouTube at Schnozcast Space Podcast. What was the thing that you called iHeartRadio? Um, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> but you do always forget it. Uh, probably, yeah. yeah. You just did, even though it's right on the screen. Yeah, well, I, I think I covered it by saying your podcast platform of choice. <laughs> You hate iHeartRadio. Anywhere, anywhere where you get podcasts. That's true, yeah. <laughs> and please don't forget to email us at schnozcast at gmail.com with all your existential questions or requests for relationship advice that Daniel would be more than happy to provide as the only voice of reason in the room. Also known as Dr. D. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, she's not. There's no way. Yeah. Please tell me someone else in your life calls you Dr. D. No. Who only the call me that? Only the podcast. Hello, caller. You're on the line with Dr. D. <laughs> Apparently just Nick. I want to live in a world in which you are Dr. D. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really funny. I could. I just have to go back to school. <laughs> No, <laughs> not necessarily. No. Yeah, plenty of people call themselves doctors without being doctors. True. That's Dr. Very Dr. Doom. Uh, Dr. Doc, Evil. Dr. Dr. Dre. Dr. Roboto. <laughs> yeah. I think that's Mr. Roboto. Damn it. <laughs> Dr. Fraser Crane. He wasn't a doctor. I think he actually was. I think he was, a doctor. though. No, in the show, but not in real life. Well, yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> you can be anyone in the uh, show. Uh -huh. See? But he's not a doctor. As opposed to Bill Cosby, who actually was a doctor. The Jello pudding. Mm. Mm. Ratings Entitled are going down. Like <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I don't have a, I don't have a, uh, I, don't, we don't, I know we don't have a graphic, we don't have any theme music for it, but it's, it's, goddamn it, it is time. Well, no, we're gonna go back to housekeeping here. Oh shit, I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, I have two things for you. Okay. Well, three actually. For me or for the audience? For everyone. Okay. Uh, as Nick already noticed, we did. Well, I changed the themes on. Uh, our live stream for the Halloween season. I did notice the orange. I like it a lot. So yeah. busy uh, day at work today. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, secondly, mm-hmm. uh, I need you guys to pass this around and take a look at what I recently got in the mail the other day. A summons. <laughs> Death threat. We the people of Michigan versus Corey Selesky. <laughs> <laughs> He's carrying over what looks like a uh, like a small speaker, a small black box, some sort of pen. It's labeled Jim Halo, res- all rights reserved. All right, hold on. Okay, this looks very expensive. Yeah, there's no way it is. Oh, really? His replacement glasses. Here, I'll let you open it. <laughs> <laughs> Broke my glasses on vacation They just sent me them five months later Anyone recognize those? Uh, no uh, Should I? I think you should Are these the glasses that you had that you broke and they sent you new ones? Are those no. like Tony Stark's glasses? No Because they go along with this Okay They they go along with what? Oh, oh no way Oh man Where did that you get that? That is awesome that's awesome. Did you get it when you were up there? Nope. Those are uh, those are his glasses from the uh, the movie. Right, but oh, do take off that oh, hoodie. Yeah, yeah okay, gotcha. <laughs> so Danielle, you obviously this nope. is not a surprise to you. No. Okay. So <laughs> while he's doing that, explain to us what the fuck is going on and how that how this came to be. He's gonna have to explain that to you. Danielle. Him. First did, of all, let let's Did let, you guys have sex while he wore that last night? No. Okay. That's all I need to know. <laughs> did he wear it to bed? No. Okay. All right. What are we looking at here, Corey? What are you wearing? Well, this is uh, the Globowski sweater from Pendleton. Yeah. And, uh, you're not going to believe who I acquired it from. Joe Guido. Oh, you didn't get it from the store? We, we I did not. Okay. Joe Guido. Our very own Joe Guido purchased this for me. Are you kidding me? I swear to God. As a matter of fact, when we left- uh, An early birthday present? That's what he said. Holy shit. I do remember that at the bar you were trying to uh, swindle him into getting you something. And I remember he's like, no, that's all you want is a sweater? I'll buy you that sweater. And you're like, ah, you don't have to. And I remember I'm like, are you drunkenly trying to get Joe to buy you a sweater? And he's like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> so did he order it while we were there while he was drunk? No, he, he, ordered, he ordered one for himself to spite me. And he ended up sending it back because it was too big. Yeah, and I told him, I'm like, dude, well, before you send it back, let me come over and try it on. I'll if it fits, I'll I'll, I'll buy it off you. He's like, okay. So a couple days later, I'm like, hey, dude, I'm I'm not working today. Um, if you mind, I'll swing by and let me try on that sweater. He's like, oh, I, I I sent it back this morning. I'm like, fuck, okay. So then I met him at Beer Garden a couple a couple weeks after that, <laughs> and we were talking about Big Lebowski stuff and all that. And uh, he's like, man, you just got you got to stop with it. He's like, it's just, it's, it's, it's too much. <sighs> Thank whatever, you. Dude. I'm like, it's, That's like telling Joe, you got to stop with that GG Allen stuff. It's just I mean, too it's, much. It's something I like. You know, whatever. He's like, oh, oh okay. So we went out, you know. When Tell I'm him he's here. late to the game. I told you to stop Lebowski <laughs> stuff a while ago. <laughs> he told you to stop everything a long yeah. time ago. Talking about, you know, whatever, this and that. And uh, it's fine. I told him, I said, you know, yeah, I'm going to go up to uh, Tawas and order it from the uh, the store up there. Shake it again. And he's like, no, no. He's like, don't do not do that. I'm like, Joe, again, why, why, I, if I want to get it, I can get it. He's like, no, no, don't do not do that. I can get it if I want to. Yeah. So he shows me his phone. He's like, hey, ha- happy birthday, man. I'm like, well, it's nowhere near my birthday. He's like, I, I-, I want to get it for you. He's like, I know what it means to you. He's like, you know, you've been a good friend. He's like, I want to I want to get it. I'm like, all right, Joe's just at that point so you- now where he's, he, I, he might be feeling a little too good. So I let it be at that. Didn't say a word about it. Smart move. Um, And then the other night when we were at Three Nicks, we left. I dropped you off. Mm-hmm. He called me. He's like, hey, man, he's like, can you come over? And uh, he's like, I want you to see the house. This is after you dropped me off? Yeah, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. I'm like, I haven't been over the house in, ever since he's gotten it redone and all that. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely swing by. So I swing by, and we're uh, we're sitting in the basement talking as Brandy Bar, which the house is fucking phenomenal, by the way. Really? Uh, oh, my God. You guys you guys have to go over and see. I would if I was invited. No, we weren't. I, I maybe still would. I've never been there. Invited. <laughs> well, he, no, I absolutely would go over. He, uh, I've been there. I want to see where Joe falls asleep on the Zoom sessions. <laughs> We're we're sitting there talking. And he comes down. He throws a keychain in front of me, and it's got the bowling pin from the sweater. And I'm like, "Oh, dude!" I'm like, "Is that is that from the one that you uh, you sent back? You just didn't send that back with it?" He's like, no, no. He goes back upstairs. He comes down. He's got this. He's like, 
the large. He's like, it's for you. I'm like, I, dude, I, I start tearing up. I'm like, no, man. Oh, like, yeah. I, like, I can't. There's no way. Uh, yeah. Because you know how much it costs. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, dude, are you fucking sure? He's like, oh, yeah. He's got, I know how much it means to you. He's like, you know, he's got, I don't have money to spend on, on the one that will not be mentioned anymore. Right. Um, he did right. say that at the bar as well. He's like, oh, why not? I ordered it for you. I think he ordered it for you at the bar, Corey. No, I, dude, I, I said I, we, we were at Beer Garden when he 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 actually went on his phone and ordered this one. I, I, dude, I'm telling you, you guys are smoking. I remember him talking to Corey, and Corey's like, no, nah, I don't know. And Joe's like, look, man, I got money. I don't have money to spend on a girl anymore. I, I can order this. And if it's that big of a deal, it's just a sweater. And Corey's like, no, no. And I look at him, and I'm like, I'm looking at Corey, and I'm like, don't you dare let him buy you that sweater. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. I would, I wouldn't. I would never. And he just had the same look he has right now on his face. <laughs> Wait, hold on. That, that that's the Walter Sobjack thing. Yeah, this is just me. Just keep my hair. Oh, okay. Have you seen his headbands yet, or no? Wow. Yeah. Well, that is something to behold. Are you? Those are the exact ones. Okay. Well, they. So Nick was a little correct on the fact that the actual ones are Vautners. You could just look over there, and they're vintage. <laughs> Uh, like from the 1970s, the actual pair itself were like $260. You look like Stevie Wonder. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, they, it works. It absolutely works. And these were Jim Halo, obviously, the co- sunglass company realized the uh, the appeal they had to the masses yeah. and make a pair for $20. You know what? You should... Um... Is that why you're wearing plaid shorts? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You didn't you didn't recognize the shorts? <laughs> can, we, can we possibly get the entire... <laughs> Outfit on the so, just so you know, I heard he wears when, for when you do this again. Too. When you do this again, which I know you <laughs> will, he never wore an Under Armour shirt. I know. Well, that's well. <laughs> you got it. There, there's something else in the works on that. Oh, okay, good. Okay, good. But I would like you to also point out, yeah. I've never ever worn shorts and not worn a belt. But for all kinds of great news tonight. Oh yeah, it's been great news week. Look, I, I gotta. Daniel's I, like, I'm leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great news week, <laughs> right? Oh, I oh god, I I gotta say, uh, hats off to you, Joe Guido. If I, I if you're watching, which I know you're not, um, what a great gesture. Yeah, dude, like I said, I, I, I was honestly uh, so taken back by it. And uh, Wouldn't it be totally I, cool if he like was waking up off the couch right now and happened to happened to be pick up his phone and look at Facebook, and he's like, I did what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually gave it to him. Oh, shit. Wow, what a drunk Christmas that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yep. Yeah, uh, that, that's, that's fantastic. Well, I, I can, uh, you know, they can subpoena me for to say that he was not of sound mind at the time. So, uh, he, you know what? I'm going to give him the f- full credit. Um, Joe, that, Joe's like, the first person that would say, even if that was the case, which it probably was. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, whatever, fuck that, whatever. He 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 can be a sentimental dude um, when well, you, when it comes down to it. Just he, be careful. Just, yeah, just be careful, Corey, because several weeks ago. He put twenty so he could play songs and played five into my account on the phone on my phone, and I begged him to pick more music and he said no, no problem. And ever since, every time we've gone to the bar since, you know, I still have that twenty I gave you in the thing. So. Except for, uh, by the way, since we're on housekeeping and we're we're waxing uh, romantic about friendships and whatnot, um, the fellas took me out uh, on Tuesday for my birthday, and I just wanted to say thank 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 you both. Um, I walked out of there without a bill, which is always a classy move when you're taking your friend out for his birthday. And uh, you guys didn't have to do it, uh, but I truly appreciate it. It was, uh, uh, I'll I'll say tactfully, the the second best birthday celebration that I had. You're welcome. What was the first? 
Well, Lori and I spent some time on oh, okay. the weekend All together. Right. Oh, yes, it's contractually. I now, I, yeah, I, and I, I now imagine. regret asking. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you couldn't figure that out from what he said, but. <laughs> well, well, I'm thinking like, uh, I knew you know, exactly all, what he was all his about. fraternity uh, brothers took him out, you know, you know, 10 years ago. I was going to say that's how I was thinking ago. like, oh, yeah, when I turned 30. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I could see. I didn't say of all time. I said this year. Oh, this <laughs> year. I didn't catch that. <laughs> part. They, that's, they weren't listening. <laughs> No, we weren't paying attention. She look how used to it she is. She's like Corey's reciting even listening. Lebowski like, no, lines no, in his right. head, and I was trying to respond to Tony. So it's okay. I know what you're talking about. Ben. Anyway, thank you, thank you both. Uh, no I, problem. Sir. Happy birthday. You're welcome. Um, and and that night, by the way, what I wanted to mention to you was that Don't I got me. Joe to download the AMI app on his phone and actually feed it with his credit card. Oh, good. And he actually played some music off of it. Okay. So hopefully what you just described so hopefully won't I happen won't, anymore. I won't have to make any more hopefully money off not. of them? Hopefully not. That'll suck. <laughs> All right. Since we're, uh, since we're going with the, uh, we're going with the, the friendship shit. Um, this is for you, sir. This is from uh, Corey and I. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was meant to be, it was meant to be a birthday present. Uh, That's but just so far away. I, <laughs> What is going on? I don't have presents for anyone. Why is everyone buying people presents? I'm like, you, you're hosting us, and we trash your house every weekend. So I think yeah. we're even. Well, <laughs> is this a, a garbage disposal grommet? It is not. <laughs> yes. It's a new handle for it your would back be door, Ill, man. It would be ill timed if it was. Oh given yeah, what that happened you, to that? Well, no. <laughs> we don't don't make him relive that. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be horrible for all of us. Did you see where it came from? By the way. No, China. Well, you can. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. COVID, just a big box of COVID. Uh, big box of COVID. Did this sit for at least five days? Um, in the mail, it sat for six weeks. All right, let's see here. I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's in. I don't speak Japanese. I don't speak <laughs> Japanese. Oh, boy. Wow, that's sweet. You're what is it? Give me a little history on the lighter. It's a lighter. I know what it is. I was <laughs> speaking for you. Well, I don't know if you know. That's sweet, man. I have no idea how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to go through that after the on the break. Okay. Thanks. I also got. Uh, I've got uh, fluid and gas. I just can't. I can't remember which one it took. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So. Uh, so it looks like a pipe lighter. I'll throw myself under the bus. Why not? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, as you've noticed, Bob has a lot of new lighters lately. Uh, yeah. Right, but the very first one that I bought was that one, and it was six weeks ago, and it was before I went down the rabbit hole of vintage lighters. <laughs> and at the time, I was stone sober. Um, it, it was during the week. It was like on a weekday night, and I. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And in my head, I'm like, yeah. Nick told me his grandpa used to smoke a pipe. And uh, he always wished that he, he was like, oh, I would smoke a pipe. And then, so I'm like, look at this one. It's got like different pipe symbols on it and shit. I'm like, oh, man. I, I want to smoke I gotta, a pipe. I got to do it. And then Not a, a until, drug pipe or until the other night at the bar on Tuesday night where I, I mentioned it, I'm like, didn't your grandpa used to smoke a pipe? He's like, no. Yeah, no, he's no, he cigars. <laughs> so, so I'm like, well, uh, this is not a birthday present anymore. Now it's just a, uh, here's your fucking lighter. No, no, because I, <laughs> I said I always wanted to smoke a pipe. Because my grandpa smoked cigars, but people always smoke pipes, and they smelled amazing, and I've always wanted to try a pipe. That's well, awesome. I saw that one, and it had a bunch of different um, pipe, pipe graphs. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, I thought of you. And I remember I was talking about it with Greg, and I'm like, He's like, oh, yeah, it's, I'm getting used to. You have to light it in layers and, like, all this different stuff. And I'm like, oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah, so I've got fluid for it. Hopefully it's got flints. I didn't think to bring those, but uh, I don't know. If not, we'll figure it on the break. Okay, cool. Thanks. No problem, man. All right, so moving past the sappy bullshit now uh, into a segment, at which, again, I don't have any graphic for or theme music for, but I feel it's going to be the first of many. The Shinazgast Mailbag. Uh-oh. <laughs> No one. Are, are you referring to the one email that we've we received last week? We've received two emails. Two. Yep. Bob. Ugh. Yep. 
So I'm going to read the first one. Uh, this is from one Todd Dillon. Oh. He says, Todd Dillon says, hello, Schnaz crew. How is Corey's tech journey going? Corey, how does trace route work? Thanks, Todd. Well, Todd, I'm going to have to get back to you on that one next week. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I was just the, about the to read to that the, book. The answer to the first question I think you just gave, <laughs> how is your tech journey going? It's 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 coming it's coming it is coming along slowly but surely. Okay, well he he might be listening. You never know. No, and, and, and Todd, if you are uh, if you are listening, um, it's a uh, it, it is it's still in in the process, uh, not moving as fast as I I would like it, obviously, but it is moving you, along. The way you're selling it in those in that sweater and those shades, <laughs> it's, it's like you're like man, they, they call me the, I'm not Lombowski, I'm the dude. <laughs> Corey, does anything in your life move as fast as you would like it to? Yes. <laughs> yes. Which which part? She's she's sitting right over there. <laughs> is that funny? <laughs> she can't contain herself. This is Danielle, my significant other, or as I like to call her, my speed. <laughs> sure. You don't do anything really quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. <laughs> thank God we're recording this on video for all of time. Oh yes, and we're all close, amazing friends. <laughs> all right, so he wants to know how trace route works. So uh, you may have to do a bit of reading that I, before I, next I, week. I will get back to you, Todd. Especially if we're going to have him on the podcast. I can tell him in person. Well, not in person, but sure. Well, you know what I mean. And the second uh, piece of mail that we got was from Ronald Adams on the Cheesy Chicken Podcast. All right. (laughs) I was waiting for an extra reaction. (laughs) Give me a break. (laughs) So, have any? Did you? Did any of you guys listen to the Cheesy Chicken Podcast? No. Corey. I did not. I, I completely, I wanted to, and I completely forgot about he it. He was so excited about Cheesy Chicken a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> but I only think it was because of the name. I think he was like, ah, I could actually go for some Cheesy Chicken right now. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I listened to the Cheesy Chicken podcast. Okay. Did you uh, want to let us know off the air? Um, no, I think I could do it right here. I, I'll keep it brief. Okay. You could time me. Um, say I, I don't have the energy for that right now. Okay. But yeah. So Just remember, we want to do pick of the week. <laughs> it's at the end. It hasn't been for quite some time. <laughs> still have an hour and 45 minutes. So uh, so real briefly, um, I, I downloaded their latest episode, which is episode 18. And it was like going back in a time machine. Remember when we started this podcast and we didn't have any segments. We were just like free form bullshitting with each other and talking about whatever we wanted to talk about. Putting on sweaters and describing <laughs> things we got in the mail. No, this is pre sweater days. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, it was a lot like that. Um, I, you know, I remember how we were in episode 18. And um, I'm like, man, these guys are, they have a, a ways to go but I could totally draw a line from where they are to where we are for sure. Are they better at their point than we were at that point? Probably. Um, It's hard to say. Here's why it's hard to say. And I don't want to turn this into a critique of the cheesy chicken podcast because that's not, we're not about that. I'm sure they could sit here and critique us all day long, but um, it was hard because it was the, it was the first time I never listened to before. I started episode 18 and when I when they started, they had like a, a pretty cool piece of intro music, but then they just started talking, and I couldn't. I'm not watching them like maybe they were watching us on Podbean Live. Were they listening to us on Podbean Live or watching us? Uh, he was listening to us on Podbean oh. Live. Okay, but you know how we start out and we introduce it ourselves, and so therefore it makes it a little bit easier to identify the voice with the person. There wasn't any of that, so it was really tough to tell between the three or four of them. Uh, I couldn't tell who was talking, and there was no. There was no structure to it. It was it, it, knowing what we know now. Like back then, it would have been like, oh, shit, that's what we're doing. Like, woo, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. But now I can look back with the benefit of wisdom and experience and go, aha, I can't tell who is who. I don't understand what you're doing. 
<laughs> Speaking of going back. <laughs> and, and Episode uh, three, everyone. Yeah. Speaking of uh, cheersing the microphone. <laughs> but that's, this is no, nothing to say. That I, what it, I, I was highly entertained by what I heard. I plan, I subscribe to them. I plan to listen to more of them. I would love to try to get them on the line. And I'll try to follow this up with an email. I didn't respond to their email yet. I just didn't have any time. But uh, in case, are we on Poppy Live now? Yes, we are. Okay. Well, in case they happen to be listening um, or subscribe to us on iTunes, uh, I, I really like what they were doing. And I feel like they, I, I see a lot of ourselves in them as they were back then. Make sense? I mean, and starting off and, and really not knowing, you know, it's not like we delved into anything and, and really researched it. Uh, yeah. You just told us to come over to your house one night and uh, sit around your laptop and record us talking. Yeah. And yeah, so we weren't even told that like, oh, we're starting a podcast or I, it was what, episode five or something. You're like, oh, we, we you know, we should really start looking into to getting some equipment and potentially putting this online because it's, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, so I mean, think about how many episodes it took us to try to figure out how to, 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 to make the decision to put some structure around the show. It oh, was, it was yeah. like 40, 40, 45 episodes. Yeah. It was a shit ton of episodes before we finally decided to do that. Yeah. And right. then, and then at the same turnaround too, like, I, I don't know what would be better, uh, actually researching, like saying, oh, I want to start a podcast. Let me research it and go into it that, that route or yeah. just sitting down and starting it and seeing where it goes. Well, you should definitely do that. You should, if you're waiting, don't wait, just do it. But eventually you're going to get to the point where you're like, who, what, do, what do we want this to be? Right. And I'm not sitting here saying like the way we're doing it is better. Like you can look at our, <laughs> you can look at our audience numbers and go, maybe that's not the best move what they did. <laughs> maybe they should go back to just free form bullshitting. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, but, but I feel like this is, this is the direction I think we all feel is the right one to go in. So it was really interesting. I, I, I would encourage you guys in uh, any free time you get to uh, give them a listen. So shout out to you again. And the last time I mentioned your name, Cheesy Chicken Podcast. Yeah, I'll have to give them a listen as well, honestly. All right. I feel like we we should probably get into booze news. Yeah. That's and fun. now it's time for booze news. <laughs> Love that music. Yeah. Um, I know, uh, I've got, I've got a short one I can start with. Yeah, but talk about your booze news. <laughs> oh, I've got a web page that won't scroll. That's great. Oh no. You want me to start with my first? Yeah, one? go ahead. All right. So, uh, there's an article that states that Finnish airline is bringing its in-flight meals into grocery stores. October 14th, the Finnish airline is offering would-be travelers who missed the taste of airline food among the COVID-19 pandemic the chance to bring in-flight meals home. What? Finnair announced that the airline-inspired taste of Finnair meals will be available Thursday at the K-City Market store in Vantatamisto before be, which is like our, it's like our Kroger. Apparently, can I, can I interrupt for just a yeah, second? Has just anyone did. has yeah, anyone but. ever been on a flight and wanted to take any of the food home? Oh, back in the day, the airline food used to be good. I used to, as a kid, I looked forward to it. I don't know about being an adult and eating airline food. <laughs> Have you ever yeah. had some of the Biscoff cookies on Northwest? Yes. That's the only thing I could think of. I found I, would, I found where they sell them. Yeah, and uh, you, I you bought seven boxes. I bought a a couple, a gross, a couple. <laughs> I buy them by the gross now. I finished one of the boxes before I even got home. <laughs> Today? No, no, no. Oh, okay. From the <laughs> wait, you had a whole box before you got home? Yeah. How many are in a box? Uh, so two. They're, they're packed. Uh, two, 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 things. two yeah. cookies per pack. Yeah. I'd say twelve packs. You ate twenty four of them on the way home. Yeah. Oh my god. Remember, I have to drive a little ways. I'm not sure that makes. You're it really okay. spending money on priorities these it's days. It's really not that far. And, <laughs> and believe it or not, they were from the Dollar Tree. So, oh, that makes mm. sense. Mm. All right, sorry, all about Dollar Tree food. Uh, yeah, I, I can't uh, say that I'm on board with that. But uh, so anyhow, so they rolled them out into these uh, chain of stores across Finland. The airline said its meals are based on Finnair business class offerings and will feature a rotating selection of entrees in different days of the week with an entree menu designed to change every two weeks. The meals are inspired by Nordic and Japanese flavors and seasonal ingredients. Uh, head of product development of Finnair Kitchen. Uh, 
The menus include, for example, Finnish smoke and reindeer, as well as a serving of beef and teriyaki radish sauce, which draws Tokyo street food. <laughs> draws the vomit right up from your yeah. stomach. <laughs> Tokyo st- street food uh, culture. Uh, Finnish kitchen director of operations said the move was inspired by the slowdown in airline travel during the coronavirus pandemic. So are they just taking all this food that they had ordered and like shrink wrapping it and trying to sell it in grocery stores? Pretty That's much. what it sounds like. <laughs> we want to offer the opportunity for Finnair experience and everyday luxury at home <laughs> now that the travel has been restricted in many ways, uh, said the uh, director of product development. Um, it is especially great at a time when most of Finnair's kitchen employees have been laid off, so we can bring our workers back. That's it. I don't know if I'd try that. The reindeer? I would absolutely try that. I don't know. Airline reindeer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get to try any other reindeer. Oh, I could order you some reindeer. You, you want reindeer? I could have reindeer by the end of the day. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> you want to- <laughs> You want a toe? I can get you a toe. I got a reindeer hookup. <laughs> I wish that Nick understood that joke. Yeah. We yeah. got to work on that. I don't know how we do it, but. Once once Halloween's over, I'll we can get... stop giving out Halloween picks. That's going to be one of the picks. I'll, yeah. I'll give you that, like, uh, white butcher paper, and we'll wrap it up and just write prancer on it and hand it right oh, over to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll be hornswoggle into that. <laughs> More of a. By the way, let, the, let it be known that we made it to episode 95 without saying the word hornswoggled. No, I think we said it before. I'm sure so. somewhere in there. No. Nope. I think you said Our it. Our cast historian would have noted that. Uh, he's don't. busy with other things apparently yeah, now. Yeah, we don't have one anymore. So anyone that wants to be the new Schnozcast historian, <laughs> we are now accepting applications. See, that's the problem is our, the Schnozcast people that like the Schnozcast so much that want to be a historian end up becoming our friends and want to be our friends, and then we have too much fun with them as our friends, so they no longer want to be on the podcast. Yeah, we got to keep business business. Yeah. Stop being so gosh darn amazing. Friends to everybody. Fuck you, Kevin Cromwell. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck you, Gina. Oh, God. Oh. oh, dude, you didn't just say that. She's in the room right now. I know. That's, That's why, why I said, said it. it. Wow. Damn you becoming our friends. So, Corey, you got any booze news? Nah, no, I'm good. All right. I, uh, so, I got one. Uh, this is from CNN Travel. Uh, like many travelers around the world, Jesse Katayama from Osaka, Japan, found his dream tip thwarted by the spread of COVID-19. He his arrived. Dream tip. Oh, that's what you said. Did I say tip. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he found the tip of his dream thwarted by the spread of COVID-19. <laughs> ah, someone want to see my dream tip. <laughs> <laughs> he arrived in Aguas Calientes, the town from which most people begin their Machu Picchu exp- expeditions on March 14th. Already has had his entry ticket and permit to enter the World Heritage Site on March 16th in hand, but at that moment, the Peruvian government uh, Denied access closed the tip. site. They closed Machu Picchu, and he was stranded. Ooh, Machu Picchu. Since March 14th, the 26-year-old Katayama has be- become a local in Aguas Calientes, where he has been renting a small room for the past seven months. Although border closures have kept him from visiting other South American countries, he has made the best of his experience by exploring local attractions like Putukusi Mountain and the Calientes <laughs> Waterfall. The what? the what mountain, Bob? Putukusi. Ah. Oh, yeah. I bet you'd like to do that right now, wouldn't you? <laughs> he even taught boxing classes to some of the local kids and has made friends in his accidental new hometown. No, you box like this. That's what he said. That's live audio. But his first name is Jesse. Well, but Punta Kanahana or whatever you said the last Putukusi. name. Putukusi. The Putukusi Mountains. <laughs> no, those were the mountains. Yeah. What was yeah. his last name? Katayama. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. That's how he, he he's not. He's from Japan. Yeah. It's the Jesse that's a little more questionable. Yeah, that's what think. I'm saying. Okay, good. Yeah, that's hence the accent. <laughs> My best Japanese. Mm. He tells CNN that his goal is to open his own boxing gym when he returns to Osaka, so he uses lockdown period to practice his moves. Uh, do you want to read this in your best accent? No. <laughs> I've, offen- I've already offended <laughs> so have. many Japanese people. You have. Um, however, as he started running out of money, it looked like he would have to head back home to Japan without ever having used his Machu Picchu ticket. Enter the tip <laughs> Andean Roots Peru, a local tour company. With help from the Nation- National Ministry of Culture, Takayama was given special permission to ent- enter Machu Picchu and to have the normally crowded site nearly all to himself. He was accompanied by two photographers who documented the experience and by the chief of the site. 
and he posted it on Instagram. I never thought I'd make it. I thought I'd never make it. This is with no accent whatsoever, so I'm just quoting. I thought I'd never make it, but everyone asked the government and the town, and they gave me super special permission. Peruvians are so kind. Thank you so much. Sounds about right. (laughs) Anyway, I thought that was a bit of a heartwarming story. To close out booze news, um, are we doing a shot? Mm. The rest of our segments aren't, aren't also called booze news. Eh, might as well be. So similar story oh, to that. Just, just, just a tip. Just a tip. There was also a uh, a guy here from America that took a uh, a cruise at the beginning of the quarantine and was uh, working in a jewelry store on the cruise, mm-hmm. and he like basically all the workers got stuck. And quarantine on the ship, and he's been on the ship for like five months now. And They've been quarantined for five months. Yeah, on the ship, all of the people, all of the people. I love the people. Yeah, and it's coming. They, they, he's like he, they played videos on. I can't. I, I think it was Dave and Chuck the Freak. They were playing the news story, and uh, he was talking to his parents, and he's in his and, and state so he, room. Well, and that's. I mean. People that are actually on the, the crews that are paying to be there still have very small rooms. Yeah. The crew rooms are insanely small. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, because they're not paying. Yeah. So, and he's just been stuck in there. But all the other people that would normally pay for the larger rooms are not there, right? No. Why wouldn't they let them I, go to the bigger rooms? That I do not know. You know pay, you know go. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> to have like hundreds of full size rooms available on the right, ship, and, and you're stuck in you this closet. All right, tonight we're gonna have another one of our room raffles. <laughs> Which employee's gonna win tonight? God, please for please. the for the Lido deck. Good Lord. <laughs> All right, so the shop before it gets uh, it's warm. Uh, so for our listeners and viewers, we are gonna do a shot. Got shot. Please join us. Pour the uh, libation of your choice. And now join us. I think uh, Tony's actually joining us in this one. Uh, Tony Martinez? I don't know if he is. Woo! He's too taken back by your comment from before. He's afraid of the tip. (laughs) Tony was a little put off and said, "Uh, Corey, it's taken aback. I said, thank you. I didn't want to say anything. (laughs) Yell, don't don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> That's true. Can we move into uh, Killer Robot of the Week? Oh, sure. And guess what we have now for Killer Robot of the Week, Bob? Oh, yeah. Bob and I know what we have, but uh, maybe Corey doesn't. Oh, I won't put it up there. No, go ahead. Tell me what it is. Right? Can- beep, beep. What? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> All right. Can you leave it up there for, for the time being? You want it up through the entire story? Just right next to his uh, face? No, just, just until I've got some questions for Nick about this picture. And I was saving for the podcast. Oh, wonderful. Here we go. I'll wait. Yeah, we, we're on a seven-second delay. Um, there we go. I, I got it up with, with all of us in a row. So you can see the picture and then, and then us now. Okay. Wonderful. Fantastic. Our seven-second delay is just uh, in case that someone says something we don't want. Okay. All right. First of all, I gave you like high praise for this graphic. Okay. Are you padding this uh, constructive criticism? Uh, yeah, you got to start out with you got, yeah. You, you, you did a fantastic. You got to come with the praise first, but, right? And then you tell me another comment. The carrot, yeah. and then yeah. a little bit of the stick. Yep. All right. So my question is. Yep. First of all, <laughs> I can't wait for this. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, now I can't see the whole graphic. It's kind of small. Uh, Ooh, that's what she said. Oh boy! Uh, Can we put it back full all, screen? Yeah. Jesus Christ! Oh God. come on, dude! All right, so full lever, Corey. So, uh, thank you for a uh, you giving me. Although it's great, it appears to be a glorious head of hair. I appreciate that. <laughs> you do have hair. <laughs> I do have hair. Okay. Um. Now secondly, to the discs. Secondly, uh, why am I wearing slippers? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It Why was, would I be wearing slippers to kill a robot? You weren't specifically. Um, so did I come upon a killed robot, or did I kill the robot? You tell. Okay, you tell me what you think happened. 
Well, I think you've depicted me killing a robot with with a with a mallet. Well, you work from <laughs> home, so slippers. you don't really dress up very often. <laughs> uh, the self proclaimed, by the way. But, but this is not how I'm dressing every day. <laughs> no, I do. I do like the idea of Bob sitting at his his chair in my stripy pajama in, bottoms, in his, <laughs> in his 1950s pajama <laughs> bottoms, <laughs> and his very thin robe. Yeah. With an angry look at my face going, fucking robots. But here's the th- here's the thing. If I have to kill another robot this week, that's, that would be so That angry. is probably overdressed for what Bob wears around his house when he's doing work. <laughs> you, don't, you don't wear a dressing gown in your home. You that's wear not a, t- a dressing gown. That is a, well, that is a 1974 <laughs> bathrobe. And by the way, my, why am I sweating <laughs> through the bathrobe? No, no, no. That's just that's just shadowing. That's just shadowing. There's, you're not sweating through. I noticed the shadows are in particular, like around my armpits. No, no, no. It's just shadowing. <laughs> see, because there's it's it's down there underneath. Uh, you can see it at the back. Down well, I was I was I was sort of pleased that apparently you had me like having exerted a bunch of energy to well, kill you, this robot. Well, you would need to. And I would imagine. I sweated through my through my. Back. No, I didn't particularly. I didn't place all that. So you're giving me too much credit. Okay. Yeah. No. All right. So, I think my last question here is, if I have killed the robot with yeah. my what looks like a uh, <laughs> looks like a a lobster a lobster claw smasher, <laughs> uh, like a like a rubber mallet. Well, you're 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 very. Uh, I, I I'm I'm you you're not uh, the most pro gun person in the world. So this is a weapon that you would probably have in your home. I've talked about I've talked about uh, looking at guns. I've gone to shoot with Corey, uh, and when it comes to killer robots, you can absolutely consider me pro gun. So uh, okay, if you yeah, ever, but you don't have one. So if there was a robot in your home, you're not going to be like, hey, robot. But cartoon me should have one. I'm going to go buy. I also don't have that bathrobe. Well, I I don't know that. <laughs> I'm telling you that. <laughs> so my last question is: yep. If I've killed the robot with my lobster claw smasher, yep. Why is there still light in his eye? <laughs> exactly. Oh, you son of a bitch. It's so just, I didn't fully kill the robot? It's still to keep you wondering, you know, like where the appendage comes back and, you know, does one of these kind of things. Okay. You know, I mean, that it's it's the whole conspiracy theory of, you know, it's going to put himself back together. All right, you can take that off full screen now. <laughs> I, think I've, I think I've asked all my questions. All right. All right, so for Killer Robot of the Week this week, um, I I actually didn't have anything, so I decided to Google it. And the first thing I came up with was a website called StopKillerRobots.org. <laughs> wow. <laughs> As one does. So if you want to join the campaign to Stop Killer Robots, uh, navigate yourself to StopKillerRobots.org. And this is an actual site. Um <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing? very pleased with myself after I made this. You should be. I was laughing. I, that's I was why laughing. I started with the praise. I, I started la- with the carrot. It was. A, it's a great. I am so happy with that. I was laughing a lot. <laughs> yeah, and so was I. I'm like, that is fucking phenomenal. <laughs> I still had the questions. Yeah, but they weren't like, no, don't ever show that picture. Questions. They were like, I love that picture. I just have some questions. That's all. <laughs> to me, I was. Uh, I was like, well, you know. Corey's going to have his own little Funko self. Danielle has a cartoonized version of herself because it's not, which she's not really. No, she hates it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, but most girls would hate any kind of depiction of themselves. That's true. I'm not sure he'd come up with a picture of you that you would like. No, she wouldn't approve it. No, but if it was, I'm not sure that that he could do it. If I took a picture of her face right now and made it a cartoon, she'd be like, why would you do it night? I don't even have makeup on. I'm not dressed up. The camera needs to be up here. Up on the ceiling. It would never work. So, That's it's women are why very very picky. Why didn't you make me a cartoon? Well, <laughs> that cartoon looks heavy. Why no, do I, I th- look so I heavy the, in that? I cartoon think the point picture? is that there's no way you could anticipate what would please her. No, and that's why it doesn't with, matter what you would do with I, with Corey. I knew it was going to be you know he he. It doesn't matter what the the image would have been here. I'm like hmm, yeah, all right. <laughs> and with you, I knew there were going to be some comments, but I I thought it was going to be like. Oh, I'm a good, I'm a good sport. Why is my? I think it's uh, a great picture. Wow, my hair looks a lot grayer than it really is, or like something. There's be something like like that. No, now that I've hit fifty one, I feel like I wish my hair was as, oh, only as gray as that picture. <laughs> I don't know. It's just uh, it's a caricature, but <laughs> thank you. 
The, the the funny thing was with that with that photo. It's funny how when I was talking about it, he didn't want to answer my question. He's like, okay, here we go. Right. And now I like I literally started my story. He's like, hold on, let me talk about my graphic just for a minute. No, yeah, I do because because <laughs> when you told me that you know like you I, you thought I put like so much thought into it, which I thought it, you did. I I did and I didn't. Okay, if you stole it from someone and you've been no 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 okay no, no. all right no there's an app to cartoon somebody. And so I literally you did took not a, t- cartoon me. So I took a photo, and within seconds, it came up with like hundreds of different versions of you with that face. And I was like, "Wow, that's actually pretty cool that an app could do that that quickly." Um, and the only one that wasn't like jumping for joy or had like a heart emoji or something stupid um, was this guy standing with a mallet. But he was like with this big smile on his face. And he was um, holding a cup of coffee and a mallet, and there was there was an alarm clock smashed on the ground, uh, and it was supposed to be like I'm tired, but I killed my alarm clock, you know. And I thought about as it. As you I do, saw the springs, and I'm I mean, like, it would still kind of work. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I saw the springs, and there was like a blue background and everything. I'm like, well, I got to get that out of there. And then I was like, you know what? I could replace that coffee with a robot arm. <laughs> And a lot of robot parts and a dead robot, and I could change his face to be an angry face. So there was a lot of editing that had to get to that point. I got to tell you, uh, I'm not an art major, but I've, I've taken some art classes, and I will tell you that that, that and, picture. As, as we saw in very old episodes. Shut the fuck up. I, <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you that, that that picture, the graphic that you made, tells a story. Uh, it doesn't need any further explanation. Mm-hmm. I only had questions because I feel like I was the subject. You you were absolutely, uh, but otherwise, uh, it it absolutely describes what we're talking about with no other explanation or other words or captions. Even yep, we're good. I mean, is a home run. I'm totally fine with it. Appreciate. It. I'm sorry. Continue. No, you're good. So uh, the campaign to stop killer robots, as I know you want to, on stopkillerrobots.org. This is a site that is an actual site. It's got you can make donations. Um, you can contact your government if you happen to be living in the Philippines or the Maldives. We're pretty big in the Maldives. So, oh, nice. Um, this is a so just for an introduction to what they this is. It, it's meant to address the threat of fully autonomous weapons. The problem being, um, in the field of battle, uh, fully autonomous weapons would decide who lives and dies without human intervention, crossing a moral threshold. Because those robots who operate those weapons uh, would lack the inherently human characteristics, such as compassion, that are necessary to make complex ethical choices. So who lives and dies in the battlefield? Sure. Um, I think for, uh, I think there was, was an example here, if we, if I could find it. Uh, the problem, the solution, blah, blah, blah. Mm, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Problem and solution, blah, blah, blah. So they're, they're, this, this campaign is urging states, nation states, I assume they mean, to launch negotiations on an international treaty to retain meaningful human control over targeting and attack decisions made by military, uh, the military of the governments of the world by prohibiting the development, production, and use of fully autonomous weapons uh, should be enforced via national laws. They're asking for all countries to commit to create a new ban treaty to establish the principle of meaningful human control over the use of force. So I, I think the point here is that uh, if so so often now in, in this day and age, in the battlefield, decisions are made via drone, via, you know, everybody's seen the, the, the image or the de- depiction of a kid who played video games who's now sitting behind the control literally working video game type controls operating a drone that is, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles away, um, which is actually capable of, of firing live ammunition on targets. Yeah. I think they're pretty clear about that in their uh, commercials as well. Whose commercials is that? Like the army. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it's a, it's a great, um, um, recruiting tool. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. But, but, oh, what they, shit. and there, and there have been many films about, uh, some of the pitfalls of this, but uh, the, the 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 thinking is that if you give the control away, if you take the control away from the kid who's sitting behind the console and you give it to robots, 
In other words, they're making this decision based on software. There, there's no one actually operating them with like a little like PS4 joystick or Xbox joystick. When I do this, that That's needs a joystick. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, and you give it to to a computer to make those decisions. They can't tell <clears throat> the difference between, uh, hey, in, in this quadrant that we're supposed to be monitoring, there's men with guns, but they don't know whether they're men with guns who are out um, searching for a bad guy, right? Or they're guys with guns looking Wish to hunt food for harm. their yeah, or, or, or hunt, hunt food for their yeah. families, right? So they can't make that decision. So lives are going to be lost. Uh, ethical choices are being made uh, with, without human intervention, and that's what they're trying to prevent. So I don't not, I don't need to go any, into it anymore. Um, can't there be can't there yeah. be oversight um, where the robots cannot make a life or death situation until a human sees the situation and gives it the okay? Yes, but they would have to they would have to build stop gaps and safeguards into the into the code in order for that to happen. And I think the point is that they have not done that. And they would find their way, the robots would find a way around it. Well, the, the more that you introduce AI, the more um, the computer, you're, you're giving the computer the power to make that decision as to whether or not we need to have a, a human approve this or not. Um, generally, the, the point of AI is to build up enough intelligence within the computer to make that determination so that we don't have to do it. That's the whole, the whole point of, of AI is to remove the human component, let the, let the computer do it and imbue it with enough intelligence and um, decision-making capability that it can make that call for itself. And it just can't do it. And I feel like I've lost Danielle. And so we're going to move away now from Killer Robot of the Week. What? (laughs) Did you happen to see... uh, Most beautiful girl in the world. um, That is Corey's real friend. So just settle down, all right? (laughs) Um, The top graphic this week... I did, I did. Uh, you know what? But I, I only saw the yellow, the orange because I noticed he changed all the the yeah, captions but, for our names and the. So I did not. I literally did not notice until you just pointed out all the <laughs> the, the Lebowski. Yeah, and from you. No, from well, you? Nick Nick made it originally, but not knowing about. Uh, no, I didn't know about the, this, but uh, really no, knowing Corey loves Lebowski. How long ago did you make it? A couple weeks ago. So I made him. Wow. I made him about seven or so top graphics and i just changed the middle he had some very specific uh requirements that he wanted um so with with switcher the the way that you can put it in there so we all stay smooth and so we don't get that like um logo bleed through that we had before you don't want the bleed through no is what i said was i'm like (laughs) you know so you know Corey and i put our heads together we're like well how about just um, a giant square image of you know uh, black, and we'll only do the top. So there was some right. ba- there was some back and forth. We worked on it for a couple of days, of him saying yeah, a little higher, a little lower, you know, things like that. And once we got it right, um, I start I made a couple, and then I thought you know this is a good opportunity. You know, instead of constantly having to tell people, you know, visit our uh, different um, audio content platforms or whatever. Hey, we we can put them right up there because we are you know officially on these on these sites. Yeah. So um, we have every right to use their logo um, because that's where we are. Yeah, um, they've they've in a lot of cases they've sent us those logos for us to use. Yep. Yeah. So um, so I made a basic uh, of the black background, and then just I've been switching out the middle, and that was when I worked on just for Corey. Um, then he didn't request or anything, but um, I thought about it, and I'm like, you know, I don't know much about the movie. I've only watched a little bit, like 25% of it. But I'm like, let me Google the Big Lebowski opening credits. And it was a very, very simple graphic that came up that looked very close to that. And so I found fonts and stuff as close as possible as I could. And those are uh, very, very, very similar. Um, yeah, no, look, it looks fantastic. And even, even to the effect that I thought was strange, but the word big in the opening credits of the big Lebowski mm-hmm. had a log wood grain. 
And so yeah. I've had to find log wood grain to put it in the middle of that. And I had a side by side trying to get everything as close color wise to what the intro was. So I sent that to him. Oh, nice. Now can you make this? Nice. Now can you make this? Can, can you add this? Do you think we can add YouTube in there? I'm like, Jesus, dude. I, so I had to, I, I finally had to stop. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Oh, God. Corey, why do you think there's a the wood grain in the big? What do you think that pertains to in the, the bowling alley? Um, the bowling lanes? Yeah, yeah. you think so? so? I'm going to yeah, say I know so. Okay. And then uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the it, font for, is it supposed to take place in Las Vegas? No. No. Because it, it, it looks very similar to. Los Angeles. City of Angels. No, it looks very similar to the Las Vegas sign font. Well, it, it, what the, it, what the it's supposed to look like Vegas. Is, a, is a is the old timey graphics of the bowling alleys in the bowling yeah. alleys in the eighties. Yeah, uh, Magneto is actually the one uh, number the number one font they used for all the stuff in the movie. <laughs> yeah, and I know I searched it and I found it, but unfortunately I couldn't specifically call for that font in the program I was using. So our our audience is really. Uh, gobsmacked at how deep the two of you have gone into the fonts of the Big Lebowski. Deep dive. Well, I think tonight was the most appropriate night to talk mm, about. Oh, it. absolutely. So, <laughs> agreed. You're not going to get me to talk about it much more than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're all hoping we never talk about it again because <laughs> <laughs> movie fonts is not a riveting subject. Uh, tell us again about the uh, algorithm of that robot. I don't believe I ever <laughs> talked about an algorithm of the robot. But. What was the one the, the math segment that you had? The whole I did. Time? I did. And I'm like, dude, Danielle was just bobbing back and forth. <laughs> the math segment. Uh, but you know what I do miss? <laughs> no, I, I miss the reading. Is, I love how is, you're like is difficult. Stick first, then carrot. Yeah, <laughs> reading is difficult. Oh yeah, I didn't bring the book. Yeah, so I, was too, I was too busy bringing your present. Well, that's the, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> what? I did not bring the book. I hope that you had uh, the presence of mind to bring presence of mind. Anyway, I think we're ready for a break. <laughs> you want to take us out, Corey? You want to break already? With a gentle fade. All right. Yeah, we're at uh, one hour. Oh, well, holy shit. All right, we're going to take a, a, brief, a brief hiatus here and then come back for the second half of episode 95 for Schnott's cast 95 motherfuckers very very close to the century mark but in the second half if you join us again uh we're gonna we're gonna regale you with stories of gentlemen's agreement we're gonna get to pick of the week oh and uh who knows what else we're gonna get to in the last hour so please join us um don't go anywhere we'll be right back. <laughs> Cast. Let's, uh, well, we've got some booze that's sitting here. <laughs> it's yeah, some, whole, something we found in the dryer. We cannot, Just old booze. We cannot wait. If we waited until we did Gentleman's Agreement to do these shots, they would be hotter than room temperature. Ugh. So let's not do that. So please join us. Uh, if you've got, uh, some, some old booze lying around, if you have some old booze, if you have some old uh, beer, if you have jug wine that's turned into vinegar. Or boxed wine that was never wine. Um, if if you're sitting around sorting Halloween candy that you're going to give out this year, or you purchased too much Halloween candy and you realized, we can't do that wait, this year because it's COVID. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> who, who pre-sorts out their Halloween candy? Some people do. Some people have before, OCD. Before you, you put it in, hold on, before you put it in the... Um, in the, the the bowl, the, the bowl. Okay. So let me t- to be let me t- served to the kids. Yeah, let me tell you this. So, hold on, what do you mean by pre-sort? So let me tell you this. Define pre-sort. I, I've never done this, just to stipulate. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you this. Define what these maniacs if, are doing. If there was Halloween candy and I bought yeah, like the party packs, yeah, and I'm like, oh no, all the nerds are mine. 
and I'm taking all the nerds out, and then I'll give the rest to the kids. <laughs> like, to well, that's me, not pre-sorted. No. That, that, that's, that's selfishly pulling out your own candy. Yeah, right. I'm all in favor of that. <laughs> yeah, okay, so now we're parent, on the same page. Yeah, absolutely. Now absolutely. we're on the same page. Absolutely. I'm not giving these kids all these nerds. These okay. are mine. So quickly before we do this shot, what, what is, uh, Corey, what's the candy you would pull out uh, and not give to the children? Uh, any Reese's? Oh, yeah. Um, any... Keep talking, baby. Uh, just to ask you about all of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's the Corey I'm Gonna looking for. Going to make a for. great father. <laughs> that is the Corey I'm looking for. <laughs> Danielle? Mm, Snickers or Milky Ways? Or breakfast burritos. Milky Ways? Mm-hmm. Or not Milky Ways, Three Musketeers. Ooh, strong choice. I would do yeah, Three Musketeers or Reese's. It would have to be Reese's, either PCs or... I assume it, it includes right. pieces and peanut butter cups. Boy, and cups. Yeah. Um, not like the white Reese's. Those are weird. Um, but Whoa. Uh, like the like, white chocolate ones that they make. Like You don't like those? <laughs> they're not. I mean, I would, in a pinch, I would eat if, them. If you would not had, buy them, yes. but, but if that's all you had, you'd like, I'd eat them. Right, yeah. Yeah, okay. No, just the original. Um, but, or, if you had, but if you had a bag, a, a giant bag of candy you were looking to put into the bowl to get to the kids... And the only Reese's they had were the white chocolate ones. Oh, I'd pull them out. Okay, good. Um, milk duds, too. I don't know that I've ever met anyone who likes milk duds. <sighs> okay. Whoppers? Yeah, Whoppers? That's what, that's what uh, I'm talking wha- about. That's yeah, what I'm talking about. So are milk, but, uh, buds, milk are, buds. are milk duds the, the chewy ones? Yes. They're, yeah. they're chewy. No, yeah. no, no. What, milk, the, du- milk duds the are whoppers filling out in have a second. The, have, crunch. Have the... It's have a, the a malt have, ball. Ha, have the chalk yeah. in the middle. Yeah, those yeah. are the ones yeah. I want. Whoppers. Milk does are like the caramel. No, I don't want those. <laughs> Whoppers is what I'm thinking of. Yep, I'm with you on the Whoppers. I got you, buddy. All Thanks. Right. Thanks, man. Shot time. Cheers. Cheers. So for next week, Woo! Um, if we can add it to the uh, to the agenda or the syllabus, mm-hmm. top five. Halloween candies. Ooh, that's a good one. Considering we've never done the top five fast food restaurants. No, no. we will eventually. Well, well, yeah. We're very uh, Halloween specific lately, so. Did we just kind of do that, though? <laughs> I Can- mean, Candies? No. I mean, we like did the top two. one or two for sure. Top two candies? We just, we just said it. which ones we would yeah, pull out I, from. Yeah, that's I, not I top five. Those are what we would pull out. And so, I'd, I'd like to also yeah, give some change. more thought on it. <laughs> what? I'd like to give some more thought on it. You would, you would okay. really like to stew over if this. I had some yeah. if I had some time. You should see all the candy at our house. Are you serious? Oh god, yeah. Are you talking about year round or just because it's yes. Halloween? No, no, no. So everyday candy? Yes. yes. What, what's in the everyday candy drawer? <laughs> Tell me. Oh my god! No, because like no, 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 don't give it away because we'll we'll do two different things oh, next I'm sorry, week. I'm ruining your. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll do right. the top five. And, and we'll, we'll do a, a what's, deep dive conversation. Yeah, what's in Corey's the candy drawer? There, in, there, there at, is one that we have a Corey Daniel's house. A shockingly large amount Not of we, you. Oh, okay. okay. I don't have no need do, to argue, do, kids. Do you, do you understand? Other than <laughs> you, other than those uh, salted caramels by uh, Struthers or whoever the hell Saunders, Saunders? Saunders? whatever Saunders. makes them that my grandma gave me. There's no candy in this house. Oh, um, there's none. You'd have cavities at our what house. What kind of lives are these? I, <laughs> How do you have no candy in your house? I have none. Okay. I, I just, I'm not into sweets. There's a lot of starch. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, lot of there's a lot of carbs in this house for sure. And now we're going to go into gentlemen's agreement. Oh. And uh, for uh, this episode, I would like to start with Nick Bader. Okay. I so rarely do. Yeah, you never do actually. I have before. It's a little off-putting. Once or but twice. Sorry. It's fine. So, for gentlemen's agreement, I was given cabin fever, and I liked it. Did you? I did. I've never seen it, um, but I like the. I like the. I like the fact that there it's was cabiny. I, lo- I liked how cabiny it was. No, there was there was, there was good scenery. It was uh, the mindset of of a good cabin. Oh, there was the mindset of kids going up. Uh, kids, well, and yeah. Late, let's not do that. Late twenties. You know, going up to uh, going up to a place like uh, you, you can know. love the kids, you just can't love the kids. Okay, it's disgusting. Um, you know, like out in Colorado somewhere, like uh, at a huge log cabin and having a good time. 
It was cool in the aspect that you knew what what was going to happen. Spoilers. Um, but it wasn't cheesy gory. Mm. Um, cheesy gory. It was just coined a new phrase. Yeah, it wasn't like the, you know, the clearly fake crocodile coming out of the river and, you know, oh my god, you know, like you know this really really cheesy gory film, you know, and blood splashes everywhere, you know. But it was this extremely, extremely gory, um, but in a cool, like, special effects way. Um, okay. Almost uh, head-turning kind of way. Are you, At, are you a big horror movie fan? You know, as you know, I haven't... Uh, s- I didn't. That's why I asked. <laughs> well, I haven't finished the sentence. Um, excuse me. Can I finish? Um, as you know, I haven't seen many movies in general. So, yeah, I like horror movies. I just haven't seen them. <laughs> I love the shit I haven't seen. Yeah, of course. Makes sense. When, when Makes did plenty you, of sense. Upon viewing how many horror movies did you determine that you liked them? A couple. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's stuff I like I just never think of. So, like, in the mood of Halloween, you know, I can get into stuff like that. It's just sometimes I never think of it. Have you ever seen The Great Pumpkin? By Charlie Brown? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's not a horror movie. No, but it's a, it's a Halloween staple <laughs> as much as... As much as watching uh, which Christmas great pumpkin story, did you see? <laughs> as much as watching a Christmas story on Christmas t- Christmas Day is a tradition. No, I don't watch it on Christmas Day, but I will watch a Christmas story. That's for sure. And I will also How do you not watch before Halloween. What? I will watch the Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. When do you watch a Christmas story? Not on Christmas Day. When do you That's, watch it, dude? You know how busy we are on Christmas when Day. When do you watch it with joint custody parents? My entire life. When do you back watch and forth it? And back, uh, you know, in December. Yeah, it's it's this. It's like saying, That's a "Oh, you I'm know what?" Say hard fail. It's like saying, "Oh, I can't watch any of these Halloween movies until Halloween Day." And if you were to actually have, well, that's to be, what you're saying exactly. I can't watch any of this shit until the day. Uh, I got to watch it before. I I can't watch it on the day of. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is you are saying, <clears throat> let's not watch any horror films until Halloween Day. No, all but I'm there's not is, much going on on Halloween Day on Christmas. At least for my family, it's very, very busy from like seven in the morning till eight o'clock at night. There's no. What? You yeah. also know that they play that movie from. Six in the morning till Midnight. twelve o'clock in the yeah. well, I we, understand we what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, we don't have time to sit and watch movies. We no we're saying just sit and watch it should always be on in the background somewhere. Yes. But then you're Thank not you. then you're not watching it. Doesn't matter. You know, you still you no. still pick up the parts. No, Bing Crosby is on in the background singing oh, White Christmas. So he is watching it's just not Christmas story. <laughs> I'm listening. He's he's watching Bing Crosby. Yeah, that's right. You are an old soul, sir. I am I you said it earlier in this podcast. <laughs> yes, I am. So Jay, Bing Crosby is what we listen to on a Christmas merry old soul. I would I would say yeah. Jay, Jay from the Beer Man podcast uh, did just comment that he loves it's uh, it's a great great pumpkin Charlie Brown. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So you, you got one with you there. So here's here's a question on, on that topic, and we'll go back to gentlemen's agreement. But what's a Thanksgiving thing that that you watch? Charlie Brown. It, it, the great turkey, Charlie Brown. No, it's a it's a Thanksgiving special. It's a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Is, is there a called. holiday that you don't watch Charlie Brown? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Fourth of uh, July, Columbus Day. <laughs> there's, no, there's no Charlie Brown Columbus Day. Is uh, President's Day. There is a special called Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, and for, if, if there's anybody who's listening to us who hasn't seen Snoopy and Woodstock stringing the popcorn on the string and slicing the turkey. While they're sitting on the field, I'm like, I, I don't know what you're why, doing on Thanksgiving. Why are they stringing popcorn garland on Thanksgiving? Because that means you haven't watched it. I haven't. You you must watch Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Uh, I guess you better give it to me. So, uh, I got a copy. Just, just in case Probably. you guys were wondering, my uh, favorite Thanksgiving Day movie is Thanks Killing. <laughs> I actually, well played, sir. Surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly to most, I actually watch all of the Thanksgiving friend specials. For Thanksgiving. Oh, I am not wow. surprised. Crazy. I am Surprisingly not surprised. so. But anyhow, so going back to that, yeah, uh, Cabin Fever was awesome. Loved it. Um, really gory, ripping skin off. Um, <laughs> blood going everywhere was was super cool. So uh, I give it a thumbs up. Thank you, Danielle. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. All right. I, I uh, now nominate uh, Danielle. 
<laughs> I, I think that's the way it goes. Yeah. I think that's the way it goes. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Nominate somebody else. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Why, so, why should I be yeah. like a traffic no. light directing? No, yeah. you're not. You're not. I a good had to watch, what was it? 8321? 8213Gates. 8675309. Not worth watching. <laughs> so dumb. At first, who gave I was, it to you? Who gave it to you? Corey. <laughs> so at first, I was mad because I was reading the description of it. And I was like texting him, how dare you have me watch a scary movie? You're not home. Mm -hmm. Did you withhold sex? Which was not it my just, choice. I just watched it today. Oh, okay. So Why did you wait until today? You had I all week. I forgot about it. Until there, but you knew you didn't watch it. What, what, you didn't, you didn't, didn't want to watch it, it was, without him. I didn't know it was a horror movie. I thought it you was did. like. You did. You looked at the no, description no, no. last weekend. No, no, no. I looked at it today. <laughs> no, 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 you no. looked at the description <laughs> last weekend. I, I ripped. I, Danielle, he I literally just up, watched episode 94 on Facebook Watch tonight. He was and I saw you up, looking up. At right. His. He was looking up the actual killer stuff. I thought it was Son like a bitch. documentary on the killer. But she told you, he not told you it wasn't a documentary. Crap shoot. You asked him if it was a documentary. He said, no, it's not. I don't remember any of this. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it basically is a really crappy version of like a paranormal activity or a Blair Witch project. Uh huh. But like even worse and done after those movies were done. Oh, no. Like the quality is horrible, the acting <laughs> is awful. The one part where they had somebody being dragged by this ghost or whatever looked ridiculous. Who's there? <laughs> he like all of a sudden the guy like gets pulled by like in a doorway and like it's really like a quick like you would pull a rug kind of thing. Uh huh. It was very strange. It's very stupid. But why were you concerned that Corey wasn't home because because you were I a thought scary it was something scary. I don't like watching scary movies. I hate scary movies. Oh, well, this is a perfect month because so he assigned that to you, yeah, to 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 fuck with you. Well, I don't even know how he sat through it because it was that bad. Right, but you're saying it wasn't it, scary. We, it was, we don't really necessarily hokey. know that he's seen it before he assigned. I, I, it. I, I oh, he would have. Okay, to. good. Well, or he not would necessarily. He, oh, he would boycott the gentleman's agreement then. And I, I definitely okay. watched it. it, well, it she it, would have to. It was. <laughs> I got I got a little too vested into it to be like, okay, fuck this. Time and to I turn told, it off. I was like, how did you get vested into it? Mm. I'm like bored out of my mind watching this. Oh, the girl took her shirt off. <laughs> well, okay, there was like half naked oh, sex. Oh, okay, that's a little, that explains a little bit more for Corey. That's for sure. Uh, there was like so. the token like dumb girl that was really pretty and had a lot of makeup on and her boobs were hanging out the whole time. Uh, no, it sounds horrible. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> bad, bad movie. Corey, did you find you this? It would be horrible. hilarious if guys did that same art movie when they're describing boobs Yeah, there, like there are certain guys that do that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this girl had, your boobs hanging out. And, oh. Corey, did you find it on MrSkin.com? Uh, no, MrSkin.com. Uh, honestly, Drew and Mike talk all the time about Mr. Skin. Oh, yeah. They have for, for years. years. Mr. Skin. Uh, they were will, talking about it back in like the late 90s. Yeah, they they call him all the time. They still have him on the podcast, and they used to have him on the radio show. Mr. Skin has categorized and organized like every film with nudity. Uh, partial nudity, frontal, anything you can think of. And you can go, I believe it's MrSkin.com. Mm -hmm. and it's, you, it's a pay site now as far as I'm aware. Is it really? He, yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't even have an app? No, well, not, they might. No, I have no idea. I don't believe so, no. But it was just a normal guy that said, you know, that loved watching movies and well, was put a, that, let's put that in quotes yeah was a hornball yeah and was like I'm too lazy to do two quotes i'm just gonna do the one yeah quote. <laughs> and and was like uh you know and they sought him out and were like this is awesome and he can tell you any movie that you can think of where there was nudity and he could tell you the actress um if if you were just like uh gwyneth paltrow you know, she was never in anything and he'd be like oh no actually in uh 82 she was in uh such and such such and such and she showed her tits and they're like what <laughs> like are you wait hold on what so yeah i don't know if it's a pay site now bob obviously has a silver membership so um, no i listen to drew and mike not recently you don't no i didn't but back when i did they became a pay site okay so search search Mr. Skin, uh, but yeah, it, w it will tell you all that stuff. Fair enough. So yeah, I do not recommend this movie. Fantastic. Okay, <laughs> so who do you nominate here? Corey. All right. Oh, all right. 
Um, I had to watch the original 1981 version of The Evil Dead. Yes, sir. Given to me by Mr. Bob Rankin. Um, well, let me tell you, buddy. <laughs> wow. Uh, it was definitely your quintessential. Like, I thought I, I thought the Gacy one was very campy and uh, uh, just <laughs> Ooh, wow, I, ironic. That face. <laughs> <laughs> evil Daniel, dead evil dead daniel had the most cartoon face i've ever seen when you made that comment oh, she was yeah. like <laughs> it's true i mean it's true that you will but you haven't seen the original evil dead so no but i don't never really go ahead she doesn't watch horror movies and you're not home she would never have made it through that if you weren't there through the evil dead no oh easily dude no yeah the, the there there's no, there was nothing actually scary about the evil dead yeah uh, to me, at least, because it, it, it was. Eh. There you go. There were there, right. there were some there were some scenes that you know it tried to make it seem like there was going to be something happening when, uh, you know, the entity was coming through the woods and all that. And mm-hmm. spoiler alert. But I think we've covered that. Uh, Jesus. But it, the, everything was just so like to me. It, it came down to the actual like how they shot the movie. Yeah, and what was going on in like the actual kind of like background, uh, like the continuity, fucking terrible, which I found, which I found it was kind of great though, because like it, to me it was like uh way before the Blair Witch, it was like the nineteen eighties Blair Witch that they how they shot this movie. Uh, I f- I feel like the Blair Witch is probably in the nineties. That's what I'm saying though. This this yeah. was this was the you saying it's the eighties version, yeah, the eighties yeah. version of the Blair Witch, right. Um, camera on your shoulder. Oh, dude, it, Nick, if you it, you should watch it this sometime through this month. Oh no, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, but it, like, even the lighting, like they'd open the door to the cabin, and for some reason, it was insanely bright inside the cabin. I'm like, well, that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Why it's very dark outside, but inside the cabin, which, studio lit. Oh, I, dude. I, oh, I feel like, like on horror movies, the the rules are different from normal films. Probably. You know, it, it, they're not going for realism as much as heightened um, scariness, you know? And I, 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 I guess I, I could see back back then how that was. It was kind of a scary movie. Um, but the the actual, like, uh, the scenes in it, like, there was nothing that, like, actually jumped out at you and, and really made you, like, it didn't give you that suspense and that, that thriller. Um, that today's day and age would would do with a, with a, a horror movie. Uh, I I do got to say though the claymation that was yeah. way way ahead of its time. That that was pretty impressive. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, so for the rest of the movie, did you did it did it did you clock that it was made in eighty one and that you know based on I, I know it's it's tough to do, but no no I was I wasn't trying to be like okay well this was made in eighty eighty I, I was still like trying to. To get no, into that, it that, that that what they were doing was uh, may look stupid now, but in eighty one it would. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah. I said no, I, and that that wasn't a, a sarcastic comment just, by any means. No, no, but it, that's cool. But it, but it probably didn't age well. I think is what you're. Oh you're God, saying. no, yeah, no. But but back then, I, I I could only imagine seeing that in a theater. Yeah, being like, how the fuck did these guys do this? Like yeah. making making one of the zombies, you know, melt in that, which uh, some of the stuff took way too long. Uh, they they, they really they really dragged out a lot of scenes, That's um, but I I could see back then being like yeah this, like how, this isn't even possible how how did this even just happen, uh so you know knowing now like you know what we do with movies and all that I get it to where I again I don't think it's going to be one that ages well and that uh, a younger generation is going to watch it and be like oh yeah man that that, that was fucking awesome it, it's going to take a real movie. <clears throat> Uh, connoisseur, if you will, to yeah. to watch that and and really appreciate um, the different aspects of it, which that, there was a lot I, I did appreciate about it as as a movie and you know uh, as a a, a theatrical uh, I don't even have a follow up word for that, but I'm so theatrical proud, commentary I'm so proud in, right in, in whole. I, I feel like uh, my movie choices for Corey over the last six months. Yeah, are you proud? Yeah. Yeah, that's my, wonderful for you. I mean, he's all grown up. Yeah, that's he's cool. learning about film. He's he's literally talked about lighting and continuity. I'm so proud, so proud. It's fantastic. 
but it, it for yeah for for movie buffs definitely give it a huge thumbs up um if you're just looking for a good horror movie um something that's gonna scare your pants off look elsewhere <laughs> eh, should probably should probably go elsewhere but but like i said for for its time it, fucking phenomenal movie and uh I, I would recommend it to those that that are that into to movies and 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 theater, if you will. All right, we will. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think I nominate Bob. All right, so Good choice, I, I had to watch uh, In the Tall Grass. So, um, what I will say is, I I when I started watching it, I had the same. Has anyone here ever seen the M. Night Shyamalan film? Um, I'm going to say no. The one where Mark Wahlberg and some other girl are battling. They're trying to like escape from a town where like the trees and the wind are attacking them. Yeah. Nope. It's God awful. <laughs> God. It's God awful. Like he did the sixth sense and then he did. A couple other movies after that, The Village. I thought he was supposed to be a good, uh, good director. director. Yeah, he uh, Sixth Sense was amazing. He right. did the one with um, Joaquin Phoenix. Do I can't think of that one as. And Mel Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what the name of the movie. is. Braveheart. Um, no. uh, I can't either. But um, there was that one, and there was The Village, and things just kind of started to go downhill, and then they got to the fucking Mark Wahlberg, trees are trying to kill us kind of a thing, and I'm like. Christ. So when I started watching this, I I got this that same sense. I'm like, okay. So the grass is gonna try to kill him, and this is gonna be a fucking okay. All right, uh, all right. Signs, I, signs. Thank you. But that that's the one with Joaquin Phoenix and yes. Mel Gibson. Yes. Not not with Mark Wahlberg and. It's like the, the the trees or the fucking evil trees or whatever trying to kill him. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah, got yeah, that yeah. part. Mm-hmm. Reservation Road. Oh no, that's Mark Ruffalo. Uh, <laughs> we own the night. That's not a horror movie. Nope, that is uh, not it. M Night Shyamalan. Oh, who was that? Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. It's a. It's an M Night. Okay, so oh, while you, gotcha. while you're looking that up, <clears throat> but then I then I a, a, at the end of the it was probably like the 20 minute mark where I started going, oh, this is a bit of a different kettle of fish. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I recognize like Patrick Wilson, who played the dad, yep. has been in a ton of other movies. It, uh, the Conjuring, he played. Um, I think The Conjuring had like four or five different movies, and he always played the same character in those movies. He was in Watchmen. He played uh, Night Owl in The Watchmen. Um, he was in Fargo, which if none of you have seen Fargo, fucking phenomenal. Um, Never saw it. And. So he kind of lent this like, oh, okay, we've got someone who, because I didn't recognize anyone else in the movie. There was no other <laughs> actor. I'm like, I've never heard of, this, never seen this person before. But Patrick Wilson showed up. I'm like, oh, okay, They're, they've lent some credibility to this whole movie. And and the story took some turns where I'm like, oh, I did not see that coming. And uh, and I thought they I thought they turned what could have been a very predictable piece of shit movie into a pretty interesting film um with with some with with some pretty good acting and some good good plot points to it so i so i liked it a lot i was i was surprised at how much i liked it i thought i have in the first 20 minutes i thought i would hate it you're going into it and you're like okay what what yep. could really tall grass? Yeah, bad. it's going to be wrapping it's around their buy. necks yep. and stuff. Yep. You know? No, yep. oh my god, they, the grass is pulling us in. You know, yeah, and then that's it. Which is weird because it's like, you know, you think of, the, I constantly think of a cornfield. So like tall grass, yeah. I'm like, yes, this doesn't make sense. Where where is there just giant tall grass and. But it it, it kind of wraps you in. And once they start establishing the rules, and there are a lot of rules mm-hmm. to the story, and so spoiler alert: when you go into the tall grass, like once you go in, there's no coming out. Like, oh, okay, that's a rule. They establish it very early. I'm like, okay, I get it. Mm-hmm. Don't go into the tall grass. Once you're in, like now you're in the tall grass. 
can't get out of the tall grass. And you've seen the choir. I'm not. Yeah. I'm preaching the choir here. But um, and then there, there's another rule, and then and then another rule after that, and then other rules come in. And you're like, okay, so I'm kind of learning about the being in the tall grass and what it means and how, because ultimately there's going to have to be somebody who's going to have to try to decipher this puzzle and figure out how to get out of the tall grass. I thought it was good. Yeah, I, I, thought, thought, it, I, thought, I thought it was good. I, it was much better than I thought it was going to oh, be. I'm like, not, it, why it, did Nick assign this kind of a piece of shit to I, me? But then after the first 20 minutes, I'm like, okay, I, I got it. I stumbled upon it, uh, you know, just by, you know, pure accident. And uh, and I was pleasantly surprised. And I was like, wow, yeah. this is uh, a, a really cool spin on a new, newer aged, like, uh, horror film that, yeah. that I would have never thought of. Right. You know, and uh, there was one point that, for me was a lull which was the rock you know yeah. I was, that, and that, 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 that was my was, point i, I until, was like that until was the so- end until the end when again spoiler alert when went with with her baby yeah with the baby when the ground and i'm like, <laughs> I'm like okay uh, now I, I get it yep and that's now it's more than just a rock exactly but but I so, thought it was uh, well done. Remember the bowling alley that just appeared? Like, I mean, that was kind of weird. That was creepy. I mean, there's a lot of weird, creepy things. Yeah, in the movie, but the, but they weren't. They they came at points that I didn't expect, which always redeems a movie in my. In my and I, and I, I like the them getting back out. You know, kind of mindset of you know the church and everything like that. Just just the middle of you know the Midwest somewhere. You know, the idea yeah. of all that like. And the the next new couple or whoever it may be coming, you know, it's like, no, 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 you know? Yeah. And the fact that it's been going on for like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. And in the kid, you know, the kid was, you know, the mindset of the kid actually being dead, you know, he's not right. alive and, you know, people are alive and dead at different points in time. I mean, that was. Yeah. That, that, that kind of fucked with me and I'm like, yeah. okay, okay. All right. I'm sold. I'm in. Yep. All right. This is, this is much better than I thought it was going to be. Uh-huh. So, so well done, sir. Um, so let's move on. Uh, I've already run this, uh, algorithm and, uh, I have, uh, pulled Danielle. Corey has Nick. Danielle has Corey and Nick has me. Oh, damn it. What? Because it's hard when I have him. <laughs> Do you want me to text you some suggestions? Isn't that the other way around? <laughs> but remember though, we are in the month of October. Yes, we're trying to do <laughs> we're trying to do um, Okay. So uh anybody really want to go? I I got one for Nick. I, I was trying to save it for Danielle, but I'm okay. not watching that movie. We only <laughs> So I have you again, Bob? Right. Um yeah. So we says do. the algorithm. Yeah. So says. Yeah. I, I was trying to save this one for Danielle, but uh, we only have this cast and the next one for the month of October and then we'll be done. Right. Uh so Nick, I'm going to assign you the house at the end of the street. Okay. That is on Netflix. And I was pretty fucking creeped out by it. Okay. There you go, buddy. All right. Next. (laughs) That's for Danielle. I just sent her a text. Okay, sorry. Um, That's a good one. So, Corey. uh, No. So, who'd you sign that to? Nick. House at the end of the street. House at the end of the street. Yes. All right. Anyone else got anything right now? Yeah, I do. Uh, Haunted. It's on Netflix for you, Bob. It's a uh, it's a show. Um, so that it has season, uh, you know, episodes and seasons and stuff like that. Um, Haunted. It's called Haunted. Okay. I believe that they're, yeah, they're based on true stories. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, all all with actors and stuff like that, but based on true stories, I believe. Okay. Um, Daniel, you got one for Corey? 
Um, Good luck. Have you seen House of a Thousand Corpses? Yes. Damn it. <laughs> oh, it's come a on, Rob Zombie film. I don't come know. Come on. One of Corey's favorite songs is Let the Bodies Hit the Floor. I mean, <laughs> that was not Rob Zombie. I know it wasn't, but still, this is this is who you're talking to. Have you seen The Shining? Okay, well, on to the next person. <laughs> yes, I've seen The Shining. Bob gave it to me as a congestion. You didn't think I saw The Shining? As a congestion? I don't know what you've seen. I've never seen The Shining. Silence of the Lambs? Yes. You want me to give you any suggestions? <laughs> I'm have to give them out loud now. Are okay. the Are you live feeding these right to her phone? No, no I sent her one text. One oh. text. The other ones I'm looking Danielle, on my phone. How about the Exorcism of Emily Rose? Yes, saw it. Mm-hmm. Do you like it? Uh, how about deliver? Right. How about Deliverance? I have seen Deliverance. How about Tusk? That sounds terrible. It's got to be something. Kevin, it's a Kevin Smith film. It does have to be something that Danielle yeah. has seen though. And it's actually pretty fucking. Disturbing. I have not seen Tusk. Has to be something Danielle's seen. There's not Does it? a whole lot Danielle yeah. has seen that are scary movies. Uh, Danielle, have you seen A Quiet Place? No. Have you seen Psycho? Yes. Have you seen Psycho? Come on, Bob. What is this fucking amateur hour? Yes, I've seen Psycho. Okay. Have you seen Casper? <laughs> yes, I've seen Casper. <laughs> the Babadook. Remember, Danielle, you can give him anything. So seen, it can, it can I, you know, a, she's never seen that. So it can be. A, it can Danielle, have you seen the Babadook? Let's go back to Tusk. Have you seen Sleepy Hollow? Well, she hasn't yes. seen it. Oh, Sleepy Hollow! I just watched. I was it just again. told that she has to have seen it in order for yeah, it she to does. Count. She does. Yeah. I don't Beetlejuice. Yes, I've seen Beetlejuice. <laughs> Original Halloween. Yes. Get out. Uh, yes. You don't seem so sure. Oh, um, oh, you've probably seen that one too. See, this is the problem you get when like one of the two of them is giving picks to the other one. If one of them has to have seen it, but the other one hasn't, that's now becoming very difficult. You've well, for seen a couple, the one yeah. About the seven yeah. deadly sins, right? Uh, it's what's the name seven? of it? Seven. 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 With Brad Pitt. Yeah. Oh. Ah, oh, fuck. Ha ha. Oh, you've seen it, Danielle? Uh huh. And you haven't. Or That's about, actually not a it's bad. It's a good movie. That, yeah, it is. For, it for is. this time, of, yeah, it actually kind of fits. It's good. Yeah. All right. You haven't seen Seven? I have not. It's yeah. good. Also, yeah. uh, 13 Ghosts. Ooh, that's a good one, too. I've seen that one, too. What's it going to be? Seven. Okay. That's a really good movie. Ooh. Corey, it's a it's a very quotable movie that a lot of podcasts and radio uh, personalities will quote lines from that show. I don't know if there's anywhere to watch it though. S e v e n uh-huh. or seven as the no, you know you know what the 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 weird part is Bruce Willis too right no which which is the one with Bruce Willis I'm thinking of the Sixth, Sixth Sense? Sense no what's the Die Hard it's Morgan Freeman too. who's Morgan Freeman Morgan <laughs> Nanu Nanu they, they <laughs> 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 it was an anti-slavery movie that uh, Robin Williams did Bob Morgan Freeman. Which mic is yours? Probably whatever one you're about to mute. No, this is. Yeah. You have the HBO thing, right? Uh, I HBO. Which one? Max. I I do have Bob's login for okay. HBO Max. It's on HBO Max. Bob, I'm gonna need to use your login again for HBO Max. All right, I changed it off to change it back. Yep, exactly what I was thinking of. What What's on HBO? Uh, seven. seven. It, that's the only thing it's on. Yeah, or it's Amazon Prime for two ninety nine. Oh, but it's free on HBO. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right, I'll change it again. Okay, so Danielle. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at these. Don't make it too scary. You guys understand? You're just basically making me watch two movies. No, because I didn't make you watch this one. Yeah, but odds, I odds are odds are you've already seen it. I would say that. You shouldn't be allowed to watch it with her. What, what kind of movies do you like? What kind of horror movies do you like? <laughs> ones that don't scare me. Okay, the ones that's... that don't have horror in them. It's the month of Halloween. We're I not... know it's fine. I'll watch it during the daylight. During you... the daylight, <laughs> Danielle. No, we're shutting off the we're shutting off the lights one night. 
No. The sun? Are you going to shut off the sun? <laughs> Danielle, have you seen... Have you, seen uh, you haven't seen A Quiet Place? No. I don't Corey, like Corey you haven't seen it either? No, it looks creepy. <laughs> Corey. No, I, I have Quiet Place. Quite. Yes or no? Uh, no, I okay. have not. Danielle, you got to watch Quiet, Quiet Place. I mean, I wanted to see it because John Krasinski's in it, but it's... He is. Scary. Give me a break. All right, well, it's just going to take some coordination of schedules between John the two Krasinski. Of you. I love John Krasinski. It's actually a really good movie. Oh, I believe it is. He he does really good things, but I'm glad that this is the fabric that she grabs onto. When <laughs> okay, she- so Quiet Place for Danielle. <laughs> and I think that, uh, I, does that bring a close to, yeah. Yeah, we're all good. Yeah. Okay, um... So we're about 37 minutes now. Um, rather than doing... Did, was there something else you wanted to do? Yeah. Other than pick of the week? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little friend's trivia. Oh, boy. Time yep. to roll that die. Yes, Which is, again, some, some other artwork you need to make. Unfortunately, Baby, I baby steps. He did... Yeah, he did one piece of new artwork today, and then um, the you know, the regular um, new episode type artwork. Right, so. Right. Yeah, so he did two uh, hopefully, pieces of hopefully, new artwork. Hopefully, today. Ne- hopefully next week at some point, uh, besides the um, we're gonna have a new episode artwork, he might do one for friends trivia. Um, all right, so what we're doing here is uh, so Nick is uh, one of a, one of the biggest uh, friends fans that we know. Yeah, I hate to interrupt the segment, but the cheesy chicken podcast did just join. So, Ho-ho! welcome, the Ron. Cheesy. Uh, we were told that we weren't going to say that again. <laughs> and then he did. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. I can't muzzle Rob him. said he wasn't going to say it. I can't I heard there's him a, from here. I heard there's a seven second delay. And why are you <laughs> Why are you looking at tracking numbers from UPS? Oh, fuck, Nick. I don't know why. He says that 70s show is better than Friends. No. Uh, no. The, 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 no. Oh, boy. Them, them's fighting words, yeah. Ron. Them's fighting words. I respectfully disagrees. <laughs> so, well, all right. That's a totally different show. Should we say Letterkenny is better than the '70s show? Yellow yes. again, boom! Yellow, yellow. All right, all right. So hold on. So so Nick is a huge Friends fan. What uh, what Corey has done here is to purchase him a collector's edition deck of Friends trivia cards, and we're testing the limits of Nick's Friends knowledge. And thus far, he, he's going for getting five out of five correctly. He's not hit it yet, but he's come very very close. Uh, so are you, you're keeping notes on every episode what he hits, right? Uh, I can if you want. Oh, dude, uh, we need to do that. Hold on, hold so on. So it was four out of five, and then what, three out of five? Three out of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you ever, oh, that was your one job for this week. I know before you took the out fi- two pieces of artwork was the name for this segment. No, yep. I absolutely did not, but I, I will figure you something did. out. I just watched the episode from last week where you said you were going to. Yeah, well, I also didn't say that I would do two pieces Bob, of artwork. Bob, so. oh, Bob also gets very confident after he watches one of the old episodes, apparently. Yeah, yeah, when it's literally hours before I meet over here to do the next episode. Yeah, I think I'm pretty, pretty confident. That, I think, was that the fifth mention? No, I watched you like that from last saying. week. <laughs> I'm just saying. So four out of five and then three out of five. So when, when did we do it last? The, uh, the, the Not the ninth, the tenth? No. Ninth? Sure. Let's just say the ninth. So we got three out of five. And then the time before that was four? Four out of five. Okay. All, all right. right. So we all ready for this you. week's Friends Trivia? Yeah. And un- until uh, until we figure out a name, it's uh, the I'll Be There For You segment. No. It's, yeah, friends, no, it's, it's friends Trivia. Too. Let's, yeah, let's, say, let's go with Friends Trivia. Oh, all right. Wow. Okay. Well, next. next time you do your job. <laughs> wow. What did Susan say breast milk tasted like? Hmm. Pineapple juice. Oh, so close. Damn it. Cantaloupe juice. Ah. <laughs> oh, for one. What does Eddie get to replace his dead goldfish? Pepper. Who is Eddie? Uh, Ch- <laughs> Chandler's roommate that replaced uh, uh, Joey. Oh, apparently the yellow deck is the hard one. Is it? Wow. I was, I was thinking the uh, Pepperidge Farm goldfish. I'll give it to you. A goldfish cracker. 
Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other than Pepperidge Farm? Oh, yeah, there's plenty. Brand. Yeah, there's plenty of knockoff yeah, brands. Knockoff brands. Yeah, I've never there's seen some, any of them. There's some really horrible tasting. In really? Oh, yeah, 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 I disgusting. wouldn't suggest buying them. What kind of toy does Chandler like to take baths with? A rubber ducky. Wow, dude. No, come no? on. That's what that'd be oh, way too obvious. The boat. Was it the the uh, the destroyer, the navy boat, whatever the fuck it was? So we'll go with a toy battleship. Yeah. I guess I'll give that to you. Yeah. He 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 described it well enough. Two out of five. And we're on number four right now? On four. What was Rachel getting in Ross's apartment when she heard Emily's phone message? <laughs> she was getting a lot of things. Um but she was getting uh, tequila, and she was getting uh, ice, and she was getting margarita mix, and she ended up taking Ross's money. Uh, I mean, if you had if you had narrowed down to one, what would be the most important out of all that? Um, probably margarita mix. All right, you got it. Yeah. Last so one. He's only missed one so far. Yep. Okay. What kind of animal did Joey think would be a good addition to his World War I movie? It's a World War I movie. These are hard. <laughs> and I've I seen all of them, them, too. Yeah. Um, I, this one, I, I really have no idea. I'm going to say a lion. Negative. A kangaroo. I don't remember that at all. I don't either. I don't remember that at all. I remember the whole so three, all the, three, all, three for five. Yeah, all the episodes gotcha. with the World War One movie. But I, I, it might have been like a side comment, like when he was talking to that actor that was spitting on him, and he might have said, "Well, what, what if I'm not here one day? What, you know, what about just a kangaroo? We'll get a kangaroo, or you know, might, something like that." But I don't remember it. Not bad, sir. You, you have you haven't dipped below the three out of five uh, mark yet, so. Yeah. <laughs> Those are definitely hard questions, though. Yeah, but I like it. It's cool. It's, mm-hmm. it's a deep dive, which it For sucks. Sure. It sucks because they took it off, and which means that I have not watched Friends in, like, two years. It's on, um, it's on HBO Max now. I have I all have ten it. seasons at home on DVD. <laughs> That's a lot of work. <laughs> I know. I don't have a DVD player, so. I can borrow that, too. All right. Pick of the week. Oh, pick of the week. Yep, to close it out, sir. Nick, I feel like you've been waiting for this moment all night. Oh, you know, I've been waiting to do a pick of the week because we're always like, all right, well, we're at the two-hour and 30-minute mark. Uh, Oh, we're going to do pick of the week. Oh, we can do that next week. And we've said that for like several, several weeks. So So here we are. So here we are. So I do have a pick of the week. Okay. My pick of the week was happenstance. Um, I walked into a smoke shop with my uncle out in Brighton. Um, not one that I, my normal stomping grounds. And uh, they had a flavor. Um, typically the, the, I forgot what, the, the, typically the place that I go to here, <laughs> here in Dearborn, um, <coughs> uh, it's, it's more of a social visit. Uh, there's a lot of interacting, there's talking, let's taste this, let's taste that in regards to flavors. Um, this I came in and there were there was one thing I picked, but it was a six milligram vape juice. Um, and I only do three. The next thing uh, I said, well, how about this company? And he said, well, this is by Candy King. This is a vape juice from Candy King called Batch. And nothing on it has any kind of distinguishing characteristics which is typical. And I said, well, what does this taste like? And so he's like, well, here, taste it. So as I was tasting it, he told me it, the flavor is a not so sour, sour patch kid, but it tastes exactly like that. So I'm almost halfway through that after six or seven days. And, uh, it's really good. Really, really good. So it's called Batch by Candy King. If you vape, and it tastes like a Sour Patch Kid. 
that's the pick of the week. Okay. Solid. I'm going to go with Corey. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know what? I'm a, kind of a fan of this uh, pick your pick your victim so oh, strategy. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so one one of them this week was going to be the the gym halo sunglasses that I'm currently wearing, but we uh, we kind of discussed that earlier. So uh, kudos to you for not taking the easy way out. Yeah. So what I'm going to go with is uh, the sweater I'm wearing. This sweater <laughs> that was gifted to me by Joe Guido. No, actually, I'm going to go even better than that. So I stay up way later than Danielle does. And no. to go to sleep, I, I still like to have the TV on and, and to be watching TV of some sort. And she does not necessarily like the volume on and, and hearing all that. So for a while, I've been like using old headphones that I've had, uh, old ones from the podcast that I'd put on. I could connect via Bluetooth to the TV. Yeah which is great when I'm laying on my back and just watching TV, but then if I, I want to roll over and whatever. Masturbate. Well, that too, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do with these headphones. It's very hard to my do. My Apple Watch really gets in the way. It's added weight that I'm not used to. And then, like, in-ear headphones, I, I can still roll over on them, but they wake up and they fucking hurt. So uh, she actually found on Amazon a headband that has Danielle. headphones install, installed into them. Oh, God. He doesn't need any more headbands. You have no idea. He almost has as many as I do. Yes, this is true. <laughs> not really. But, I have a, dude, I will tell you what. The, it's it, it's not even by a certain company. It's, it's something Amazon sells. They just call them the sleep headphones uh, from Amazon. And, dude, these things are insanely fucking comfortable. Yeah. Uh, not only would I use them to sleep in, if, if you need them to cut the grass, go for a run, whatever you want to do with the them. Grass. Hold, hold oh, on, hold dude, on, hold they, on. Dude, hold they're, they're... Hold on. Go for a run? Yeah. I'm not saying me. I'm just saying... Oh, okay. All right. To, to be clear. If you like or, to run... to be fair... To be fair... To be fair... To be fair... To be fair, you I, wouldn't be going for a run. I often think that this would be a lot more fun if we really, really didn't know where those buttons are. But now that we know where they are, it's not as much fun anymore. Uh, well, that's why they're there, actually. It just makes us sound slightly more professional. So Yeah, I guess. But, dude, these had these headphones, fucking phenomenal. You can roll over on them. They don't hurt your ears. You can add great sound to them. Uh, so anyone out there, and, and Danielle can't hear anything that's going on in the headphones. Mm-hmm. What would they search for if they were on Amazon? Uh, sleep. The people a little blueprint. What would the people search for with the people? Sleep headphones. Sleep headphones. So hold sleep on, you explicitly yeah. stated that Danielle cannot hear. The I can't hear the headphones oh, when interesting. I'm sleeping. So porn just being blasted through the headphones all the time. Well, she'd be able to wake up and see what was on the TV, so... Yeah, but you can put the you you can just turn the TV off or, or through your phone and put your phone upside down and just listen to porn. He's advocating right. for you just yeah, having some, porn through your ears. Yeah, that's probably the dumbest idea. Audio porn. Have, second dumbest idea this week, Nick. Good yeah, job. people never have phone sex. What that's was the crazy. dumbest? Oh, the fucking subdivisions! You uh. fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we we that we have managed to say that for uh, another podcast. No, that that should that will never come up on a podcast because it'll nope. take the entire two fucking hours. <laughs> no, nope. guess, I'll, I'll, guess I'll, what? I'll fucking I'll fucking leave. Guess what? It I'll won't leave. It won't. But you know what? It will do. Never. No, it will do it's, nothing. It's going to be on a Facebook poll, and we'll get <laughs> oh, we'll get the actual, idea. We'll get the actual answer. That's not a bad idea. And sir, if you win, I will tip my hat to you, sir. <laughs> tip uh, the cap. You should already be tipping it. So. We should we should literally call it that. Just do a regular uh, segment called "Tip of the Cap." But anyways, yes, sleep sleep headphones. All right, very nice, extremely comfortable. Okay. Um, anyone looking to get some headphones to pair to your TV, be able to uh, to lay down, and get some some good cozy sleeping. <laughs> Not let your oh, which by the way, cozy listening. sleeping. By the way, yeah. uh, only twenty dollars. Okay. Wow. Great deal. Okay. So. There you go. All right. Uh, Bob. Um, I'm really hoping I haven't done this as a pick before, but uh, I think I was going to go with Fargo. Mm. The series. I think you may have. I don't remember it. Nick? I can't confirm or deny. Go for it. All right. I'm going for it. God damn it. 
uh, let it be let it be written, let it be known. Uh, Fargo, the TV series, one hundred percent recommend. That's all I'll say. They they just started their fourth season with Chris Rock, but wow, the first three, any any of them can can stand alone. You don't have to start at one. You can start at three. Go back to one. Go up to four. It doesn't matter. Standalone seasons, um, one of the best shows I've ever seen. Wow, what's it on? FX. Okay, but you can get it on Hulu. Yeah. Yep. In fact, uh, <laughs> I every every time there's a new season, uh, Anton and I text back and forth in like with bated breath, going like, "I can't wait for the new season." And uh, I spent. Of the hour and a half that I spent on the phone with Todd Dillon today, probably the first 30 minutes were talking about Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> that so, good, huh? Yeah, very, very Bob good. Rankin's stamp of approval? Strong recommend. <laughs> Danielle. Right. Oh, talking to the microphone. Talking to the mic. I'm Tell the world sure. you don't have anything. Yep, we want to hear. No. Um, yes. What? Huh? Whispering doesn't work either. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Um, on Netflix, we watched uh, Hubie Halloween. You're recommending that? Yes, it was funny. Corey, it's a good movie. It was. Uh, you're lucky. No. You're lucky. You almost got that. My notes didn't reload from I the was cloud. Going to give it to somebody if you didn't. I, I that would I have been the though. only thing I I might have in my lifetime refuse to watch. Oh my god, no! It's really funny. You can't. And there's so many cameos in it. It's worth watching. Mm. Um, it I, looks like a god awful piece of shit. It's not. <laughs> Yo, Corey's. Uh, he liked it. Hitched his wagon to it as well. So, no, it, it's, it's it, it may just be the sweater. I, I'm I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the Sandler flicks that have been coming out on Netflix. Chandler. Sandler. All I heard was Chandler. Uh, I'm sure, but Sandler, uh, are, are are to me absolutely phenomenal. They're really funny. Not 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 on not on par with you know a happy Gilmore, but so it's not like a okay like a like a cult Sandler flick. No 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 he he's he's reaching way outside of that realm. Does um, he make a cameo in it? Does Sandler? he make a cameo in no, his he's own the movies? Star yeah. of it. he's the star of the movie. Oh yeah, I was gonna say he's always like every, all his movies he's got to be in. Oh well, yeah. Well, usually when they're, you're the star of the movie, you have to be in it. Unless he's the director. I mean, I don't know. It sounded like you were saying he's the director. He's never directed. Oh, okay. He's like a producer. Well, he's the star and, and, and the producer. Also, but he's never said like, "I'm just going to sit back and produce this." Gotcha. Movie. Right. No. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was funny. I recommend it. All right. All right. <laughs> the I opening scene is hilarious. So. Well, that's what you want out of a good movie. Yeah. One good scene. <laughs> so we wrapped up all the picks of the week. We did. We have gotten down to the end. Covered everything we want to cover. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> wow. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, well, it's just Corey. But anyhow, continue. What are you? <laughs> oh, continue. Because we're not He's stopping like everything. Just, just keep going. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining. Please uh, have a great night. I'll see you guys on uh, the next episode. Danielle. Good night. Have a good night, everybody, and uh, join us next week. Please like us on Instagram. Instagram.